Good morning. Hi. Um, so today I'm going to be talking to you about how to lead with data. And it's not going to be about how to embrace big data or how to uh, put all your data into the cloud to get that competitive advantage. No, it's actually going to be about much more general term uh, with leading in data. It's going to be about data literacy. And generally speaking, data literacy is uh, the ability to work with data. Now, my goal today yeah, is to give you three takeaways. One, we have to acknowledge here that there is a skills gap when we're talking about data literacy. And secondly, data literacy is not just for the data scientist or the nerd in the, you know, in the room or the, or the people that are very clever and, and working with statistics. Data literacy is something for everybody. And thirdly, as there is a gap, as we will see today, in the skills and data literacy, um, in order to close that gap, we need to nurture uh, data literacy culture within the organization. Let's dive into data literacy right now. I think the first thing you need to do is ask yourself a couple of questions. Like, do you trust your data? Uh, if not, why not? And are you asking the right questions to your data? And for example, the last one, do you have a culture where employees are confident enough that they can challenge their executives or their superiors on the decisions that are made based on data? Or do they just say, okay, you know, it's, it's their decision, I don't really know how to argue with them based on data. Now, my, my feeling is that most, or maybe all of you, can, uh, can relate to at least one of these questions. And what that is actually saying is that you acknowledge that the, the data literacy as a, as, a, as a concept, as a definition, is, is really important because you, you need to know what you're talking about. And it also helps me to emphasize that there is a danger coming because the possibilities that we have with data and the skills that we currently possess it's not really matching. There's so much more we can do. So before we talk about that, let's take a pause for a second and, uh, and get back to, to the definition of data literacy. Um, talking about data literacy, we are actually talking about the ability to read data, to work with data, to analyze data and to argue with data. So reading data means um, I have a bar chart. Do I understand what I'm looking at? I have a line chart. I have a scatter plot. Can I actually understand what I am looking at? Um, not just visualizations, but also concepts like uh, statistical concepts, a mean, an average, uh, the mode, uh, all, these, all these definitions. Can I confidently talk about this or can somebody talk to me about that? And do I understand what this person is trying to tell me? Working with data is the ability to work with data, the ability to, uh, well, what I did. Uh, you have multiple data sources. Can I see how they link to each other? Um, can I identify irregularities in my data? Can, my, uh, can I... Um, that's another good example. Well, I think that's clear enough. Um, and the third one, analyze with data. This is, this is not so much about reading what I'm seeing, in a, uh, uh, what information I am seeing in, in, for example, a bar chart. No, it's much more about the steps afterward. Am I able to um, look at the bar chart and then um, create it into actions, like actionable, uh, actionable data? Can I can I analyze uh, the data for, for my company and then um, turn that into a new strategic direction? So that's actually a, like a higher level of, of data literacy that you need. And finally, arguing with data is, uh, for example, when you are all in the meeting room and you, you are discussing a, a certain topic, and you all have data, but are you confident enough that with the figures that you have at hand there, right, right then and there, are you confident enough to actually make your point? Because at the end of the day, we want to keep away from emotional decisions. I think 
um, when you look at how decisions are made, and we actually did a research on that, which I will tell about later, um, a lot of decision makers uh, within companies still you know, make their decisions based on a gut feeling. Um, but you want to keep away from that because you want to have data-driven decisions. Uh, lots of data, analyzes, uh, be confident that what you're looking at is actually, is actually the truth or at least you know, with a small amount of risk that, that it's not the truth. So that is the definition of data literacy. Now, the gap I'm talking about. Click has uh, performed a uh, research between 2017, the summer, until I think early this year, somewhere around March. They interviewed over 7,000 of decision makers um, within companies worldwide. And what they found is that only 24 people of decision makers and companies actually feel confident that their decision was truly fact-based. That means that the other, like the uh, the 60, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> the 70, uh, the 76 uh, 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 percent. No, that's not right. Anyway, <laughs> the 70 uh, something percent. Um, is actually making a decision based on their gut feeling. You know, that's, that's not how we should do business anymore in this day of age. 32% of C-level executives are only feeling confident enough to, to fully use all their data they have to make decisions. And even the younger groups, they're, they're even, that's probably even a bigger risk, of a, a, a bigger risk group, uh, because only 21% of them are actually data literate considering to our standards what should be basic level of understanding of data literacy. Um, so there's a gap and there's a lot to do. Now I have a small example. Um, does anybody remember the, uh, the, the conversation or the, 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 the hearing between uh, Mark Zuckerberg and uh, the state and the house in the, in the US? <laughs> Has anybody seen parts of it? Okay, that's good, because, uh, well, there are some summaries online. It's actually fun, if you have time, just to watch it, because you see all these, you know, what we consider intelligent people, people that have experience and are, you know, the top senior uh, people of the most, or one of the most powerful countries in the world, and they are talking to Mark Zuckerberg, and they're asking questions, and when you really listen to what they're asking, you're, you're wondering, do you actually understand what you're talking about? Um, there's this uh, woman, I don't know her name, and, uh, and at one point in time, she asked Mark Zuckerberg, um, are you, um, can you tell us how many categories you are defining within Facebook on how to label people? And, and, and he's, he's looking at her like, what are you talking about? It almost feels like she's thinking that somewhere in an office there's, a, there's a, someone sitting at a desk and then seeing all these millions of people on Facebook and saying, okay, this is probably a dog person, this is probably a cat person. It doesn't work like that. If you understand the potential of the data and what you can do with it and the artificial intelligence on top of it, you, you, only then do you understand what the possibilities are and that you know, so much of this is automated that even the people working there don't know themselves how many... It's, it's, it's dynamic, you don't know how, how many categories there are. So it's kind of like an irrelevant question for that day and that made me wonder or, or uh, yeah, wonder how much these people actually uh, know about data literacy. So. I've talked about data literacy. I have explained that there is a gap. Uh, but why is it important now? Why are we suddenly realizing today that there is an actual uh, data literacy skills gap? And there are three forces supporting that. One is data production. I mean, go to any presentation these days and everybody will tell you, you know, we're creating so much data and, and, and Today it's megabytes or gigabytes, and tomorrow it will be petabytes. Um, bottom line, yes, we are creating enormous amounts of data. But we haven't got, or we were never teached to work with that amount of data. So in order to do that, we need to start giving ourselves or teaching ourselves those skills. 
The second one is democratization of data. And this is actually about, um, in a way, self-surface, which uh, you see a lot more um, also in our products. Um, it's it's, it's, it's self-service analytics, but this also means that the data which was you know, way back only available for the, uh, uh, for the, uh, uh, for the IT department is now actually av made available for everybody to start analyzing themselves. So the democratization is, is, is the data that's being made available for everybody. And finally, we have digital transformation. Well, we have already been talking about it today for, uh, for quite some time. And, um, um, and this also means that, uh, for instance, disruptive uh, uh, technologies, uh, they're all data-driven. So you need to know how to work with that. So I guess what leaves us is to, uh, to, to ask ourselves, so how do we close that gap? And in order to close that gap, the data literacy skills gap, there are, t there are two factors to, to keep in mind. One is uh, leadership, which is very important. Um, although it's a bottom-up learning process, uh, and as I told you in the beginning, data literacy is for everybody, um, not just for the data scientists, so bottom-up for everybody, all the way to the top, or bottom-up all the way to the top. Um, but it's a top-down decision if your leadership does not acknowledge that data literacy sh should be part of the culture of the organization, people will never, will never start doing it. So it's a top-down decision, but it's a bottom-up learning process. And the second part of closing the gap is nurturing a data literacy culture. And that's something I'm going to zoom in on today, uh, briefly. So getting a uh, data literacy culture within your organization, as Click, we have identified six characteristics of a data literacy culture. Data fluency is about speaking the language of, uh, of data. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, it's, it's about reading, uh, about, uh, uh, reading data. Um, are you able to, to use the right definitions? Do you know what is being meant when they're talking about a mode or a average or you know those type of uh, uh, definitions. The analytical skills are about getting, uh, reading the data and then getting it into actionable insights. Uh, statistical methodologies, those are really for the data scientists, but they're not the same as the analytical skills. Uh, statistical methodologies is really able is is really about being able to use statistics. Uh, analytical skills is being able to use visualizations and data uh, and, and make it into actionable insights. Visualizations is about, well, can I, can I create my own bar chart? Uh, learning, and this is something that uh, is actually on the base of the, the whole company, um, it should go through the whole organization. And that's what I meant. It's not just for the data scientists, it's for everybody. Everybody should be getting involved with data literacy, at least to a certain basic level. And finally, we have mentoring. Uh, create a system or an environment where uh, people uh, that are very data literate uh, work together with people that are less data literate. And if you focus as an organization on these six characteristics of data literacy, uh, well, I'm pretty sure that you will be uh, ready for the future because eventually that's what we want to be and that will make you leading in data. So why does this matter? Why am I telling you uh, this right now? Well, a Gartner research uh, recently showed that uh, by 2020, 50% of organizations will lack sufficient AI and data literacy skills to actually achieve the business value that they could achieve. So, if you are going to invest in data literacy within your organization, there are some quick wins and outcomes that you uh, uh, that you get out of it. One is y you have uh, your insights much more quicker and you make better decisions. And also it helps you to be future proof and uh, stay competitive. And finally, because uh, everybody likes to learn, it's, <laughs> it's uh, employee and uh, engagement that will, uh, that will help you here. And, uh, and we actually have a good example of uh, a Dutch company, Cooker. They're the, uh, the water tap. They, it's like a tap and there comes uh, boiling water out of it instantly. 
And uh, they really embraced this whole data literacy concept and nurturing a data literacy culture within their organization. And it helped them grow like exponentially these last couple of years. And people are really engaged and they gave them much more responsibility because now they are confident that their employees have a certain level of understanding of working with data. So they are confident that you have your, you know, uh, uh, you have your goals for this year, just do it. Um, and they, they give them much more responsibility. So finally, closing up, um, why am I talking about this? Because I'm standing here of Click. What, what does Click have to do with data literacy? Well, beginning of this year, we committed ourselves to a mission uh, to create a more data literate world. Because what we're seeing um, with all our customers that are using the products we are also seeing you know, what, what, what they could even do more if, if larger parts of their organization were able to, to work with data. This also links back to the whole self-surface. Um, and, 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 and we thought we should do more than just link this to this product. We should actually disconnect it and say, we are going to start a platform uh, tool agnostic, doesn't matter whether you use NetSuite or an, any other tool or uh, another vendor. Uh, this is just about getting people more data literate. Um, so I have a website down here, the dataliteracyproject.org, and it just gives free courses on how to use data. Uh, you can do an assessment on how li data literate you are, and there's more information. There's actually for organizations a adoption framework, which gives you six clear steps with uh, strategies and be uh, best practices and uh, detailed learning plans, and you can use them for free. And, uh, and I think it's a great start. And again, uh, acknowledge that there is a gap, uh, understand that data literacy is for everyone, and then start closing that gap by nurturing a data literacy culture within your organization. And start doing that by going to the data literacy project, uh, look a bit around, do some free courses online, do an assessment and see where you stand. And, uh, what else you can learn to improve. Thank you.